But that was easy. Where's the other one gone? Seems to go towards six patrols. They'll catch him. There, the system's altered their orders. They now have orders to shoot on sight. He won't get far. Good. Let's just get back to the nearest facility. This guy's stare is creeping me out. I think we might have given him too much sedation. Hello, I'm Andrew Lysium, and this is a belated video. Yes, it's now uh, my time, 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, and I've been up all night. Um, now, there's, there's a very good reason for this being a late video, but it's also a very poor reason that uh, the video is actually going to be really short in comparison to most of the other videos. Why is that? And why did it take so long to do such a short video? Well, you know we're going to put together that massive, massive spaceship. It turns out that despite my machine being amazing, uh, I was getting about two frames per second. Two to four frames per second, according to Fraps. Um, more like two or three. Uh, which meant that I was going about a tenth the speed. And it got a little bit, uh, took a little while to do a lot of the maneuvering, um, which is annoying. So this, uh, it, this is going to be a, a shorter episode than most, and it mostly consists of trying to put the big ship together because uh, we had some issues once it was put together. Not only the fact that it became incredibly slow, but also the fact that it would crash the uh, the game fairly easily uh, in new and strange ways. Um, so what I'm going to do for most of this is just talk about uh, how to do a few docking maneuvers and how to do some basic interplanetary stuff. Um, also, if you ever want to know where when a video is coming out, if a video is going to be late or whatever, follow my Twitter because I'm not going to sit around on YouTube answering all the million comments that come in going, where's the episode? Because I have to do the episode at the same time as you're asking that. So just check my Twitter. And if it's going to be late, I'll put something on Twitter. Which I did. Uh, so yeah. Follow me on Twitter, dudes. And do that. Hmm. Anyway, that was the rover and the home module. Now, I had some fun with a lot of the things in this, especially the home module, in that, despite them being made exactly symmetrical, when you turned on, like, the engines and sort of the, the medium upper stage, they'd suddenly veer off course. Despite the fact that all the engines were engaged and the thing was built, and I checked and I undid it and redid it, it's entirely symmetrical. There is, you check the center of mass, it's dead center. There is no way that that's an issue there. Um, and a lot of these were having that problem, and I have no idea why. This is, of course, the hibernation ship here. Do a little barrel roll of it because it's awesome. Not really a barrel roll, it's more sort of a. just a roll, really. Barrel roll. Barrel roll involves actually moving around a point. Yes, uh, this is the hibernation ship. I do love the hibernation ship. It does look very sexy. It has 12 intrepid Kerbals aboard. These Kerbals are uh, all space program personnel, all of whom are also scientists to uh, one extent or another. So some of them are some of them are engineers. Some of them are um, experimental physicists. Uh, but also trained in uh, basic uh, self-defense and uh, all the moon given at least a year or two of training. In the in the space program, so that they can defend themselves if need be. Because while we don't think that anyone else on Kerbin's actually got particularly far in their space programs, i.e. to other planets, it pays to be careful. Now there I was having a really odd problem. You see it was wobbling around a lot. The RCS jammed itself on and I couldn't turn it off. So I had to actually exit the entire game and come back in for the uh, the RCS to finally figure out that it wasn't meant to be on. I have no idea why that was uh why was the, the case. Now a lot of this I did I did all these sense by mech jeb and it it screwed up a lot of them. But a lot of this I tried to just I wanted to check out some mech jeb's new functions and stuff and a lot of it just went entirely wrong. So I was I did all this by hand in the end. Um, except for one docking where I asked it to manually dock with RCS once I got close, and it did a fairly good job. It used up a lot of RCS, but I was fairly impressed. Um, 
Of course, a lot of this will be easier in the new update to 1.21? No, 0.21. Uh, 0.21, they're changing a lot of how uh, RCS works so it won't constantly fire and it'll actually, you know, point you in a direction and then stop. Now, uh, the top stage, the Highland ship, actually ran out of RCS, so now we're actually flying the rest of the station, which is the home module and the rover, to meet it. And funnily enough, that actually worked a lot better than trying to fly the bloody Highland Nation ship in the first place. Here we have the remote drilling rig for ore, so that we can uh, supply our ship launch pad. with all the tasty ore it needs. Now, I did make a few adjustments to uh, some of the modules since last time. Um, this one I think I changed some of the, the engines around on it and uh, put them up on those trusses. Now this also has a problem in that it wants to spin around for some bizarre reason. Um, initially it wanted to go off to one side so I rebuilt it so that it just spins itself basically like rifling a bullet. It'll just spin around its axis. That way, any force it applies to one side for some bizarre reason will get applied evenly. It makes it a bitch to try and turn, though, if you actually need to. You just point it in direction and fire it. Don't try and do anything complicated. Because, of course, it'll be spinning like a top. I also installed the Caterpillar Tracks mod. Uh, I'll probably add that in the description at some point, but if you get there before I add it in the description, don't ask me. Oh, where do I find it? You can probably just Google the words Kerbal Space Program and Caterpillar Tracks, and it'll be like the first link. So, you know, you learn to use Google. My parents keep asking me things, I keep telling them Google. My sister does as well, it's terrible. It's a, it's a simple matter. Google is basically a fountain of all knowledge. Most knowledge. Not niche academic stuff, but nearly everything else. Google Scholar will get you niche academic stuff. Anyway, with this, uh, I show pretty much the entire of our meeting thing. Rendezvous, rendezvous maneuver. Basically, we are moving into a slightly lower orbit because we're behind the craft. You want to catch up a bit, so we go into a slightly smaller orbit. So the smaller orbit will rotate quicker, so we'll catch up with it. So if you watch here, we're the probe, and we're slowly catching up with it. Now if we're in a higher orbit, we'd want the thing to be behind us, so it's catching up with us, because it's on a tighter orbit. So the smaller your orbital radius, the faster you go in terms of degrees per second. Now we're caught up with it, we're just going to fire in its direction. Cancel out a bit of the velocity. You know, this, that and the other. Now we're still using the bottom stage at the moment, which is good because as soon as we start using the top stage, we're going to start spinning around. Which will be a pain. So I only want to really dump this at the last minute and I actually dump it very last minute. To the point where hilarity ensues. There we go, we dumped it and oops, it looks like I may have dumped it towards the yep, there it goes, bouncing off it. Luckily I don't think it did any damage. Um I hope not. I don't I can't see any damage. Um because that could be awkward. Now, here we have problems landing. It looks like the ore drilling things actually have a weird hitbox. Uh, like a lot of things in the launch pad. Uh, yep, there we go. You can see that we've caused some weird spinning. Yeah, a lot of things in the Expedionary Launch Pad mod, mod have bizarre hitboxes and stuff. And uh, the collision detection on that feels off. Because it looked like we collided where we really shouldn't have. Right, so this is the Keythane Miner. Bring it in nice and close. This has got a special tug already built in. Uh, as opposed to using sort of uh, an inbuilt engine and stuff that's 
going to be used later on to take out. We're actually using a, a tug here that's uh, attached by a decoupler to the top, and when we're attached, we're just going to fire that off and let it go. Now, I actually included a load of lights because someone pointed out, uh, your curve is going to be one around in the dark. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, they'll have to be careful. Um, so yeah, I included a load of lights, so most things have lights on them now. And I also included a small uh, radioactive thermal, what are they called, RTG, uh, radio thermal generator, that's it, to, uh, to use as a startup motor for the key thing generator, because, 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 because the Wizard of Oz. Um, the key thing generator here is the one that's going to provide power, but the problem is we need the key thing, and to get the key thing we need to use the drills, and to use the drills we need electricity, so we're going to use the RTG to power up the drills, to mine the key thing, to run the key thing generator, to mine the key thing, you get the drill. Ah, <laughs> you get the drill, I mean the gist. My god, I've been up for a long time recording. Yes, uh, when you're firing for like a 10 minute burn, or whatever it is, with uh, nuclear rockets, and you're running at a tenth of the normal speed, that's an hour and 40 minutes from maneuver. And let's not forget that it crashes a lot. So yeah, that's that's a fun one. Yes, I have actually got to the point where I've run out of caffeine. Um, and I've definitely gone past the point of insanity. Oh, I did that a long time ago. Now, I've actually felt that this episode and the last episode, because of the fact that we've been doing just a shitload of building all at once, and then a lot of launching, and I, I feel they've been less good episodes, so I'm going to try and get back to the old formula next time, and we'll let this do this in the background. There we go, we just let go of the tug, and because of course it's got no probe attached, and we just set the throttle up a tiny bit, it just flies off. Now this, you haven't seen. This is the interplanetary tug. This is a beast. Uh, this runs pretty slowly by itself, and now we've loaded the thing nearby. This, actually, I way overbuilt. This, once attached, would have had enough juice to get us to Jewel. And halfway back. There you go. And you can see... That the uh, the interplanetary tug is this middle bit here with all the the, the orange things attached. The orange uh, fuel tanks are actually attached by docking ports, and we're we're fueling up the center spherical tank, which we actually launched empty. Um, but it turns out we don't need it full because I was going to just launch, uh, refuel that, and then go. But we don't need these orange tanks because we've still got six thousand delta V without them. Um, we'd have a lot more if I had them with them. And you can see there we've got the big launch pad attached to the top and it works beautifully. Now if we put this on the launch pad just so that it's a stationary object we can go really really fast. And here we go. We're 15 hours from the perfect launch point and of course I want to start early-ish on the burn. It doesn't make a massive difference to Delta V. We're talking maybe 50 meters per second extra. Ideally I was going to use Mechjeb's calculator but when I asked Mechjeb Oh, can you make me a maneuver node just to see uh, roughly where I should be going? Uh, it went, oh yeah, it'll take 6,000 delta V. We're going to Juna. Juna takes 1,057 at peak time, or is it 67? Uh, something like that. So yeah, um, I also forgot to put the protractor modern on, so we're doing this really old school. We're basically roughly gauging where we should be. And there's an online calculator that will tell you roughly where you want to be for the, the best... Uh, most fuel efficient transfer and it tells you what angle you want to be at and whether you're firing prograde or you're going a retrograde orbit. I'll put it in the link in the description because it's a beautiful plugin. And of course, this is the reason I tell people that when they're starting off as a noob in KSP, they shouldn't get MechJab because when MechJab goes wrong or MechJab does something strange, you need to know how to recognize it and how to shout at it. Here we go, we're launching. And crash. So yeah, you can see why I was very disappointed. Crash-tastic, crash-tacular, crash-trocity, crashing spree, team crasher. So yeah, I've been Andrew Elysium, and I'll catch you next time. The next time we're doing something more interesting. Just use the hatch at the end of the walkway, then you can go home. Okay, thanks. Will there be cake?
Uh, yeah, sure. Keep thing added. <laughs> <laughs>